good morning guys good morning everyone so in the last session i covered uh, controller worker configuration in linux and uh, and by the way if you want to practice linux commands right so there are some wonderful websites for that you need not have linux operating system installed on your machine so there are, let me show you some websites for that webminer.org okay can everyone access this website and click on register and register yourself please please do this right away so please note down that these details somewhere in your uh, gmail or somewhere in the notepad plus plus or something better note down in the gmail right as a draft username and email address whatever you are registering right and uh, an activation once you fill this form and click on register button like you will an activation link will be sent to the registered email address for verification so you have to click on that activation link to activate your account once you register right once you complete this registration and activation process you can click on login and uh, let me try if i am able to log in yes is everyone able to log in sir login outnam sir okay right so first let's understand why do we need to learn why a, why a performance system engineer should learn linux sir, right so should have basic uh, knowledge on linux linux and run right so in real time or in you know most of the companies you know, they need like to install set up web server and app server database server for any typical application right for any typical web application so we need web server app server and database server isn't it so and where do they install this web server like uh, http apache http what are the different web servers guys ibm http server Apache what is that sir ibm http okay apache apache apache, apache and nginx nginx engine okay. right i already explained that isn't it so i already explained what are the different web servers app servers and database servers let me open up that slide all right so i explained what are the different web servers popular web and app servers and database servers in the market right in one of the previous sessions isn't it so all these servers are will be uh, if it is an on premise application or else if, even if it is a cloud based application right all these web servers app servers database servers of your application will be running on linux operating system please remember that right most of the clients or most of the projects will be using linux operating system on system only for servers right so we, your windows is a home operating system right for personal usage mostly used for personal uses whereas all these applications will be running on linux operating system is it clear guys and these are the different flavors of linux various operating so first of all i in this slide i have shown some what are the different operating systems in the market right so we all are you know uh, comfortable and mostly use windows operating system so what are the other operating systems we have we have mac operating system and we have symbian os and cent os red hat enterprise linux and all this right is yes or no and these are mobile operating systems right mobile platforms like uh, i think this is for uh, blackberry this logo is for blackberry right and android you know very well isn't it and ios right so these are the different operating systems available in the market and now these are the different flavors of linux now right these are the different flavors of linux so say linux ubuntu linux and you have popular ones i will read out popular ones red hat enterprise linux is one popular one right mostly used in the organizations clear this this red hat enterprise linux is a most popular one apart from that we have centos centos clear is and ubuntu and suse linux and so on but the popular ones are uh, centos and red hat enterprise linux any 
Any questions, guys? Any queries? Guys, any queries? No. Okay. Now, this is the reason we have to know basics of Linux operating system. Suppose you want to log into the server, right? So if you want to log into the server, or you want to fetch the logs, server logs, right? So you need to have some basic knowledge on Linux operating system, very basic knowledge. And remember, if you are good in Linux operating system, like you will have, you will and uh, database concepts, right? You can expect double the packages, double the average package that other performance engineers get, right? Got it, right? Now, so that's the reason I want everyone to start on this, uh, uh, learn some Linux basics uh, using this website. I'll give you like, uh, there are some lessons over here. Uh, let me show you those. So once you log into webminal.org, right? Click on this terminal, right? And you get this Linux terminal. Here, here you can practice the Linux commands. Right? You need not install Linux operating system on your machine, right? You need not install or, uh, you know, to practice Linux commands. There are multiple websites like this where you can practice Linux commands. So if you observe on the top left, it is showing, uh, it is prompting to login. So here I have to enter my username and now password, right? To make yourself comfortable with Linux operating system, guys. This is the whole uh, purpose behind this. Now I am logged into the application. You see here, I am logged into the application, and so now you can run some basic Linux commands like this. Suppose I type date here, it is showing the current date, isn't it? March twenty-three, two thirty-seven. UTC. What is UTC, guys? Two thirty-seven UTC. What is UTC? Universal coordinated time that is nothing but GMT only. Understood. This is nothing but GMT. Don't ask me what is GMT now. Yes, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. UTC or GMT are same. UTC stands for universal coordinated time. This is same as GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. Okay. So it is showing when I type date, right? It is showing it is showing the system time, right? Why it is showing UTC time is this maybe this system, this uh, uh, this website is posted in this time zone. Understood, guys? Yes, and suppose if I type who am I, this is a popular Linux comment, right? It will show you the what is it showing? Your login username. My login username. Right. This is nothing but my username. Right. So you can practice Linux commands on, on this web through this website. Website and go to this webminal.org and you can make the terminal, make use of the terminal to practice the Linux commands. Now, how to know the Linux commands, right? So how to know these Linux commands, right? So is I'll share you this PPT if you are interested to practice those commands, or else I'll I'll give you one so I'll give you one tip here. Right. If you see on the right side, you have available lessons drop down, right? So click on the drop down and you, you see a lot of lessons over here, Linux lessons. Select each lesson and you know they gave you like a detailed description and the comments, right? See, observe here after this dollar symbol, this is nothing but one of the Linux comment. So let me try that now. And now first let me see what is this one? PWD, right? What is this PWD? PWD stands for let's try working one. directory should be present working directory or yeah, present working directory. Here you can see the description, see here. PWD will display your current working directory, right? So let, let me type PWD here and then click enter. This is the current working directory, right? Home and then followed by username, my username, right? Now, suppose I want to make it for, so directory means nothing but folder, guys. Present working directory means in Windows operating system, we call as folders, right? In Linux, it is called as directory, as simple as that. Okay. And now let me, so let, so what is the next command see here? mkdir v dir one right? So let me do that, mkdir. So it will, if, if the directory is not existing already, it will make with uh, a new directory with this name, 
temp in a folder with that temp right if it is already existing it will say like it is already existing right see here what does it say cannot create directory dir1 file exists already exists now let's see what are the existing directories right so you can use the command ls ls is for list ls stands for list right and this list command is what is it showing us already existing directories right what are what all the existing directories are it is showing so i okay. have directories from 1 to 7 now let me create some directory with a different name mkdir okay, directory 6 and the black color lo endu unta welcome to the telecom so mkdir hyphen v dir it i had logged in long back i have to check that okay so i logged in like around a month back or two months back i, I don't remember that exactly or when i created the dr6 i'll see that i'll look into that so first you know let's see how to create a directory mk dir simple mk dir mk for make dir for directory that's it you can see the description over here right that's around right no yeah you can see the disk what is that You can see the description here. Let's try to create a new directory. Type the following on the prompt, and this is the command, and this is the you can see the description, right? So I'm now I'm making creating a directory with name as dir8. Right? Now you see a message here, right? Confirmation message saying that uh, create a directory dir8. now now if you use ls command yes it will list all the eight directories now obviously right so practice this like then uh, this linux lessons one by one practice at least one session per day okay or if you have free time like complete two to three sessions per day while practicing okay just please don't uh, just read, read through the uh, uh, commands but you need to practice the commands okay and you can see there are lot of lessons here right see this is basic commands to navigate directories and next if you see lesson 2 if you go to lesson 2 how can we create files how to display contents and stats right you have lot of lot of lessons here copy rename how to copy rename delete files that is lesson 3 and lesson 4 basic yes, commands uh, linux is a separate chapter the upper system ha linux and mac how right so you have lesson 4 in which where it covered like basic process commands right and in lesson 5 you have manipulate or parse file contents so please go through one of these these all these lessons are self explanatory you need not have you know you need not take you know any training for this right you need not pay any separate fee for this and you need not take any separate training for this you can practice this over here guys agree can you do that guys starting today yes sir and remember you you can expect at least 1 lakh package more package if you have linux in your cv remember that okay and also there will be uh, the chances will be brighter for you if you keep linux in your cv right if you are you are good in linux commands the chances of you know and most of as most of the projects are in linux environment so chances of selecting you will become more will be more right Please understand but, but, that. But, but, but Pavan sir, this sir, uh, do we have as a tester? Do we have access to these uh, web servers? This Linux web server. When do do we, do we have as a performance tester? Shall we uh, get no, 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 the see, we access? Are, we are not doing performance testing on this. So this is to practice Linux commands only. See, suppose you want to suppose you know your web server, app server, database server are. hosted in linux servers right so if you want to correct the server logs or if you want to uh, get access to that right if you want to use them if you want to log into those uh, servers and if you want to use some commands you should know some linux commands right that's the reason for this exercise understood or no yeah agree this is only for practicing basic linux commands sir so sunil yes yes right so once you practice this i will show you i will explain what are the important commands linux commands that we use in real time i will cover that 
but you should know some basics like this got it and also like in interviews they will ask you basic they will not ask you to write any complex shell scripting they will not ask you to write some scripts in linux but they will expect you if you keep linux in your cv they will expect you some good command on the basic commands some good uh, grip on the basic commands basic linux commands okay they will ask some commands like this like what is the how do you create a directory or how do you how do you read a log file or how do you open a file in linux right so they will ask these kind of questions so that's the reason for this exercise understood or no yes sir and how to change the directory suppose you want to navigate see if it is windows operating system that's damn easy right so you can easily navigate through the because uh, na easily navigate through any folder because it's a gui based operating system isn't it but whereas when linux is command line based operating system right so you will not have a gui like windows understood or no obviously you will not have a gui nice uh, graphical user interface like this isn't it if your servers are in linux and now if you are doing performance testing and if you are given access to the linux operating uh, that servers right you need to know those basic linux com linux commands so once you practice this once you complete this lessons right so i will take one session on a weekend and i will explain you what commands do we use in real time mostly and where do we use those commands i will cover that okay i'll cover that on some weekend session clear guys but by the time you should be ready with this you should be ready you should be you should practice and you know be ready with this basic commands then it will be easier for you to learn these uh, whatever commands we use in real time i will be covering those so it will be easier for you to learn that right so grep is one popular linux command which is used for search operations i'll explain where do we use this grep and how do we use this so if you observe this example grep in error log file name dot log means we are searching for a log file name we are searching for error messages in a particular log file name i'll explain these practically guys okay in one weekend session i'll explain this practically what is this i'll explain what is this style command these are very easy guys very easy to learn so at the first instance or you know when you see for the first time it may be uh, looking complex to you but there is nothing complex here you need not write any shell scripting you need not write any code but you need to know just basic commands clear guys everyone yes sir start practicing and uh, complete one or two lessons per day so if you have bandwidth complete four to five lessons and you can complete in a week okay so having this sql or uh, or uh, this linux in your cv gives you double the package than the average performance testing in a package okay if a, if a 3 years experience guy is getting like 7 to 8 lakhs package or 10 lakhs package you can expect at least like 15 lakhs package if you if you keep this if you are confident in this you know linux commands are basic sql commands and if you keep that in your cv project that in your cv right you can expect like you know almost double the package sir me ganesh yeah good question sunil can you please repeat that for recording purpose yeah how we will you how you are using this in regular uh, performance testing activity pavan sir okay got it yeah let me explain so you remember like uh, uh, okay we explain that well what i will do is um, we'll take some sample applications that we did in scripting for scripting purpose right so uh, you remember like uh, whenever we are uh, you know doing user registration script uh, uh, script and all we used to go to the folder web tools folder the application folder and check the check the check some folders over there yes or no yes you remember that so we used to go to this folder okay let me start this yeah and file location you remember we used to go to this folder and uh, go to cgi bin 
and check in users folder yes or no yes right okay. so we are able to easily navigate because this uh, this is windows operating system isn't it see you have a desktop and you have desktop shortcuts if you right click you got a context menu and you are able to go to that folder from here or else you can go to e drive softwares new web tools in the into the corresponding folder easily yes or no but what if this this, this server is running on linux operating system how will you you will not have any gui in first place how will you navigate to that folder yes or no so command prompt to you have to apply some right so we need to use some basic linux commands like cd cd for change directory okay first you need to log into that machine isn't it you need to log into that machine uh, to that linux box and you, you will be in root folder initially when you log in and then you should go to the corresponding folder by using cd command isn't it for example if i want to go to dir1 i have to use cd dir now i am in dir1 isn't it suppose if you type how do i know that i am in dir1 if you type pwd it will show you yes or no isn't working directory if you type pwd it will show in which directory you are right then you need to know these basic linux commands right if you want to navigate through any folder or, or if you want to fetch some log files okay one more scenario i'll explain one more scenario so assume that you that's why i asked you to execute a test with web tools or uh, kona cut okay i don't know how many of you did that so suppose you got some when 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 you are executing a load test i think only few of you did that right suppose you are doing executing a load test with some 50 users or 100 users with this any of these demo applications like web tools or kona cut application you might have faced some error messages right how many of you executed load test uh, with web tools application at least yeah we can see some huh resume recording so arvind arvind right it's arvind oh, right yes yes yeah. so you mentioned that you got some 500 internal server error messages right when you are executing a load test isn't it yes so now what we have to do we can go to the that corresponding uh, server you should uh, log into the corresponding server right and go to yes. the log folder you go to logs folder and you here you will have some log files see here access yes. log yes. error log yes. install log and all this right and uh, in the same way suppose you have web tools application installed on your machine right i asked you to execute a test on um, sorry a kona cut application i asked you to execute a test on kona cut application with at least two scripts right even when you execute a test on load test on kona cut application right you may get some errors because these are small applications right not kona cut is a enterprise application of course but still if you are running a test with you know uh, 100 users or 200 users on this right anyways this is jmeter you are using jmeter right and you can uh, go up to any user load 200 or 300 400 or 500 from a single machine so you will get some errors like that like whatever arvind has mentioned now 500 internal server errors, errors or something right so then you may need to go through the log files whenever you see some error messages right you may need to go through the log files isn't it let me show you some uh, you know let me show you the error log here uh, is a uh, notepad plus plus not there in this machine sir for your information this is not click my click on show more click on show more options uh, sir right right yes yeah so this is the error log observe here right also i am not uh, that much you know comfortable with uh, 11 actually okay so uh, of course it's a matter of a uh, couple of days that's it right so observe here you know whenever you get some errors right so in the application right all those messages will be logged in the log these log files will be written to these log files log files on the server right whether it is web server app server or database server right all these messages if there are any error messages and uh, i have already shown you the this access log did i show this access log what uh, did i explain what is this access log 
Yes, yes, sir. No, say yes, sir. No. In the initial okay. sessions, I, yes, have, yes, I would have shown this. If you forget, let me show you quickly what is this access log. Okay. The word itself implies access log means whenever you access the application, some message will be written to the log file. Let me show that. Okay. I started web tools server and I'm typing the URL over here. So I access the application, right? Now check your log file access log. I cleared the log messages just to show you how it works. Okay, just to avoid any confusion. I cleared the previous log messages. Now observe here. What are the see what are the messages written to this log file? Access log. This is the URL that we entered in the browser, right? Webtools index.htm, which is a get request. And you see what is this? This is date and timestamp, right? Not just date, right? This is date and you see timestamp also, yes or no? And what is this 127.wo.wo.1? IP. 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 Address. IP address. Yes, address. IP address of what? System IP. Right, default IP address of your machine. Right, here it is default IP address of any machine. The default IP address of any machine is 127.0.0.1. Right? Please remember this phrase. Right? So, in interviews, you know, interviews may uh, catch you simply by asking this question. Okay? So, <laughs> with just four or five such questions, they can filter you out. Okay? So, anyone who is having some real time knowledge, they should, they will know this IP address of what is the default IP address of the machine. Right? They, they will be definitely knowing this. Those who are, you know, like uh, keeping experience, right? We can catch them easily by asking just four to five simple questions like this. Okay, right. So coming back to this, so this is timestamp at which we access the application, yes or no? At 8.33, I have sent this request to the server. And which is a get request, I have sent a get request. And what is this, HTTP 1.1? It is a version. Version. HTTP version. Communication where HTTP is the communication protocol, isn't it? Yes. HTTP is the communication protocol of the this application, and this is the HTTP version 1.1. And what is this 200? Passcode. Status code. Status code. Status code or response code, right? All response codes that start with number two indicates that. What does the indicate? Success. Success. Server has processed the request successfully and sent the response, right? Then only we see that uh, we get the 200 response code in the developer tools. We have seen that, right? I have already shown you that, yes or no? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Right? So whenever you access the application, right? So, and this number should be like your uh, request size or response size. I think this is response size. Okay. So, so what is the moral of this story what is happening here when we access the application some messages are written to the log file yes or no yes, see this is the this is the request that we sent from the browser directly and how about the other requests what are these other seven requests there are a total of eight requests and where does these come from who triggered these who sent these requests the index file, file. Index from index file, file you you will go to header file and then correct tejasvi right yes sir good good tejasvi right so when we sent a request to this index.htm i already explained this long back in our initial sessions i explained this you remember or no yes sir yes sir if you go to history docs web tools and open this index.htm file right You'll see that you'll understand how those are the additional requests are called. See here, this is index.htm code. We have sent a request to this file, get request to this index.htm, and it has triggered this. This index.htm is calling another two files. What are those? Header.html and welcome.pl. Isn't it? Now, 
this header dot html is calling you know again two images making call for two images if you observe this see if you observe here header dot html so it is calling it is sending request for two images what are those hp logo dot png and web tools dot png that is what you are seeing here see here in access log index header dot html hp logo dot png web tools dot png welcome dot pl home dot html so internally like you know index dot stm is calling other html files and those are again making calls to some other images and other page resources web page resources so in that way we are able to see the final output right you can check that in developer tools i have already shown this also so whenever you know let me open developer tools in the browser right go to which tab which tab we will mostly work with in performance testing guys network 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 tab right go to network tab remember like uh, you know i know one uh, some students like at when they attended interview right performance testing interviews some interviewers asked around like uh, spent 10 to 15 minutes on just developer tools you should know very in and depth out of a developer tool in the network tab particularly and the different options that we use everyone should know see not only performance testing in this case even functional testing in this or manual or uh, both manual and automation testing in this will be should be strong in these developer tools how to use developer tools efficiently right understood guys and what are the different elements in develop what are the different tabs in developer tools and which is required for what right so it, and also developers also will be very good on this developer tools but they will be mostly using this element stuff element stuff or uh, you know i think they will mostly use this element stuff this is for developers and this is for performance testing units network tab right and performance testing units also use one more tab called lighthouse again this is a different topic so this is we use this lighthouse for uh, client side uh, testing or browser side testing okay that is another different uh, concept is okay so if you are interested like uh, i will take one i will record one session i will plan one weekend session on this lighthouse tab exclusively on this you know how to do client side testing using this lighthouse uh, tab in developer tools but for now remember this network tab and if you like i am sending a new request again because i want to capture all those requests in developer tools now see here how many requests are sent to the server what is it showing here guys is it showing all those eight requests yes or no index dot stm header dot html welcome dot pl web tools dot png this is showing all the requests that are went to the server yes or no all yes, these sir. eight right exactly all these eight right yes or no yes, now sir. if you correlate this see this information see index dot html it, the size is being shown as 664 bytes sir. right so maybe uh, there is some discrepancy some small difference between these two maybe this is like a request size maybe this is request size guys okay and this is response size whatever we are seeing here should be response size response size means the size of this page this index dot htm page understood guys yes this is nothing but your request size this is nothing but your request size of your request right and whatever you see in developer tools this is nothing but response size okay as simple as that right now so this so are these request being written to the log file yes or no guys and suppose you log into the application right let me clear this and what are the other options that we used in developer tools if you want to clear this right you use this one option right clear right and if you want to disable cache means every time you want to send a request you don't want to use browser cache we use this option disable cache and uh, this is another important option suppose this is a demo application and uh, we just have eight requests over here that's it only eight requests over here on the contrary on the other side suppose if you access some application like flipkart or amazon see how many requests will be sent see how many requests are being filed number of requests right there will be hundreds of requests observe here there are around 400 requests that are sent to when we send a request to amazon.in isn't it 
now what happens here is suppose your uh, number of requests cross certain limit right if the number of requests cross certain limit right or else suppose you, again you navigate on this navigate see there are 412 requests till now i am navigating to some other page okay now see what happened now all the previous ones are overwritten yes or no yes sir yes all the previous ones are overwritten because you are not that amazon dot in request initial request isn't it but if you want to if you don't want to overwrite if you don't want the developer to overwrite right you have to use this option preserve log see when i put the cursor it is clearly showing there do not clear log on page refresh or navigation yes or no Yes, right. So if we click that now, let me clear this and let me come from the beginning now. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll uh, open a new instance. Okay, F12. Sorry. Control Shift I is the shortcut for that. Or function F12. Right. Now I check this preserve log now. Now let me show you the option. How the how does the option work? I'm typing Amazon dot in. You get around again three ninety requests or four hundred requests approximately, right? And you see the main request here, right? This is the main request that that I sent from the browser, isn't it? Yes or no, guys? Yes. Okay. Now these are all these are all called sub requests, isn't it? These are all sub requests. Yes or no? Or these are technically these are called as. these are technically called as all these uh, are technically called as or yes. if we go back to our web tools example all these eight requests are technically called as hits hits, hits. hits. who is that who told that answer yes. sir first i told sir yeah very important interview question guys okay very important interview question what is the difference between a request and a hit we made one see this is the main http request that we entered in the browser but internally there are eight calls sent or eight requests that went to the server web server these are called as hits right that is the difference between a request and a hit request is something which we type in the browser whereas hit is something hits are what are hits guys actual calls that Call are made to the web server actual calls that are made internally to the web server so in the case of our demo application there are eight total number of hits are eight whereas if you observe amazon like application right how many hits are there observe here there are hundreds of hits there are around 374 requests right there are two 374 hits to the server clear guys yes, right guys i will continue the session so these are required for any batch whether it is load runner batch or jmeter batch these are common right i will continue the session is it fine with everyone Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right now, now we are discussing about this preserve log option. So when you put the cursor, let me repeat that, please. What is it saying? The tool tip. You, you get a you get a small box kind of thing, right? That is called as tool tip, right? So where it is explaining what is that option? Yes or no? Uh, did you locate that or no? I cannot highlight that and show you. Okay. so but you know observe this area otherwise okay so when i when i put the cursor on preserve log right one second observe this area please observe this area when i put the cursor right you know like you get a tool tip do not clear log on page refresh correct do not clear log on page refresh or navigation now let's see how it works let's understand that option now i am going to i am navigating to another page right now as we selected this preserve log right these will not be cleared these will not be cleared off from the developer tools let me show you that i am navigating to some other page right yes sir request right. are continuing right so it will not override the log uh, that uh, right see you still see that one right previously before checking that option all the requests are overwritten yes or no yes right so this is what preserve log does clear guys and why do we need to do be you should be very good in developer tools and why do we need to be good in developer tools is if you are unable to record a script with load runner or jmeter or any other tool you can generate a script from developer tools 
you can generate a script from developer tools okay shall i show you that interested to see that yes sir. yes sir yes sir right let's see that another important interview question very 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 important interview question and also very very helpful when you get into some project and you know if you face some recording issues you remember some people faced recording issues with load runner and jmeter there are few people who face recording issues yes sir no guys Yes, we did we tried repair option in load runner right yes or no in in jmeter we tried different options like we re-recorded the script and all right so actually like we can rely on this developer tools okay let me show you how to create a jmeter script first uh, both jmeter script and load runner script i'll show you both of them from developer tools right now first navigate through the application whatever whatever steps you want to record right navigate through the steps right and right click over here or else you have an option also here yeah here it is export hair you see an option here called export hair right click on that export hair export hair right and by default it gave some name amazon.in.hair and i'm saving it into downloads folder observe here i'm saving it that hair file HAR file. HAR stands for HTTP archive. Those who are taking running notes, can you please note it down? HAR stands for HTTP archive. Means it is collection of different HTTP requests. Okay. Now I have saved that file, HAR file, right, in downloads folder. Now let me go to the downloads folder. This is the HAR file. Observe the size. This is around 14 MB. Isn't it 13 MB or 14 MB approximately? Yes or no? What is the size of this file? Approximately 13 MB. You know the conversion, right? How to convert from kilobytes to megabytes? How to convert from KB to MB? Thousand. Huh? Thousand twenty-four KB equal to one MB. Right. So you should. Uh, so in this case, like if you want to convert to MB. Simply divide it with 1024, 1024. This is 13 and a half MB. Yes or no? Games that, come, that comes to around 13 and a half MB. Isn't it? Now, so now I want to create, you know, let's assume that I am facing some recording issues with JMeter. Okay. And I want to convert, uh, you know, like I want to create a script, you know, I want to, but still I want to create a script. Right. Let me show you how to convert this hair file to JMeter script right so open any browser any of your favorite browser and search for hair file to hair file to jmx converter what is this jmx guys jmeter conversion file sir right extension extension of jmeter script isn't it sure. right and go to this link, uh, convert hair XML PCAP JSON to JMX format. Go to that link first, right? And uh, choose the file, choose the hair file, isn't it? Click on this choose file button. And now you can see the file is uploaded, right? Okay. Let me open this again, right? And now cl simply click on convert button. So I have this website is BlazeMeter website, guys, for your information, right? So remember, you can bookmark this one. Just Google search for it and bookmark it. Or remember it, you know, better if you can remember, that's better, right? Converter.blazemeter.com, right? Or else, you know, just remember that BlazeMeter provides a, have a provision to convert hair file to JMX file, okay? Now the conversion is completed and you get these options. Download log file, download JMX file. Click on this download JMX file. Right now, see here, uh, your file, your JMeter file is ready. Click on open file. Please wait for a couple of seconds uh, to launch JMeter. Yes. Now, see here, your uh, script is ready. You got it right. These are the requests we saw in the developer tools, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. yes. Your JMeter script is ready from developer tools. We created this from developer tools. 
right so in that way uh, how about load runner right so we have the load runner batch also now right so one second another tool in the performance testing uh, a fundamental slide i included one slide on fiddler let me show you that fiddler is one in one major tool that you know important for performance testing in is and also uh, interviewers will be asking few questions on fiddler tool as well they will expect you to be good on fiddler and uh, you know you can learn fiddler in 1 to 2 hours that's it okay it's not another uh, you know uh, complex tool like lotan or jmeter you can explore and learn this fiddler in 1 to 2 hours max okay so i'll uh, i will i will take a separate session on fiddler mm -hmm. okay or else let me simply cover it's very easy a very easy tool doesn't take much time everyone please uh, you know uh, search for google search for fiddler guys everyone please do this take this required for both lotan and jmeter batch guys okay so just simply google search for fiddler please do this guys and click on this free download and this is the company which developed fiddler telerik is the organization which developed this fiddler click on free download are you doing this guys guys yes, this is both for lotaner and jmeter batch guys both of you useful for both of you okay so observe is everyone on this page and observe here what is this what is this uh, see some websites display this prompt right accept cookies and all this we use cookies to personalize content and add uh, to provide social media features blah 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 right many websites are displaying this one right and you should know what is meant by a cookie also ah too many things to learn you should know what is meant by a cookie okay what is cookie what is meant by a cookie not our britannia cookies guys what is cookies in uh, internet language is a text to files mail with a small piece of data is a cookie is a so theoretically cookie is a small piece of information that is stored in your browser blah 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 right you have that in performance testing uh, fundamentals go through that okay i'll leave this as a diy exercise do it yourself explore what is meant by a cookie okay is a small piece of information or small file containing an identifier that is sent by web server to uh, so explore yourself if you can't understand or if you have any queries i will cover that in the next session all right so we are deviating too much here and there so let me go to fiddler back back to fiddler you, you generally click on this accept cookies if you trust the website if you don't trust the website you can you will simply close it isn't it now let's see how to set up this fiddler guys so observe here it is asking some it is displaying some down uh, drop downs right and what is it asking so it is asking for email address as well as how do you plan to use fiddler observe here right so these are the different uh, applications of fiddler or these are the different areas where fiddler is used malware analysis gaming website development and debugging right so fiddler is useful for developers as well web service development and debugging client application development mobile application development website and anal analytics monitoring security testing and performance testing right i told that right, perform this fiddler is used for very helpful for you know performance testing units right so just enter your email address if you wish to i think that is optional one right and uh, select the country or region this is for the uh, analytics purpose that they are asking us right nothing else okay i think india is in the beginning itself is it yeah right and uh, select this check box and download for windows click on download for windows right and uh, download is in progress uh cynical do you already have fiddler installed on this machine no sir okay cool right it's not there not yet installed right now so let me let me show you go to the downloads folder and uh, let's set up that fiddler let me clear these drawings right you should get a set of file like this guys and you should see this uh, see that fiddler icon once the download is completed just run that exe file right 
and click on my i agree are you doing this along with me guys please do it along with me everyone Yes, please don't pour, come back after some time in and or you know don't uh, please don't you know call me or please don't ping in the WhatsApp group that how to install Fiddler and miss that please don't do that guys please do it right away right now it says the installation was successful right and how to start that Fiddler is you can go to start and programs menu or type Fiddler in the start or run button right so you can simply go to search or else you can click on this Windows windows and type here fiddler type fiddler here right now you can see that fiddler classic app launch that fiddler tool you should see this window now right you should see this desktop application which is installed on our machine now clear guys And go through this guided tool of an easy to use React. No, no, sorry. This Kendo React. No, uh, there should be some doc. Yeah. So go through this documentation on Fiddler. Click on this documentation link. And you have some videos and blogs as well. Please go through the documentation and videos. Right. I uh, Those who are, you know, free, absolutely free and have a lot of time to practice. Right. Please go through this documentation. Documentation, blogs and videos. Okay. Now see what is Fiddler doing here on the left side panel. You see some request getting recorded, isn't it? Yes or no, guys? Am I audible, guys? Yes, sir. So what is it doing here? It is capturing. See, your Edge browser is uh, sending some request in the background, uh, some refresh request in the background, and your Fiddler tool is capturing those requests. Just like developer tools. That's what developer tools are, tool also did, right? Does, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. It will capture the HTTP traffic. These All these are called as sniffer tools. For your information, these are called as network sniffer tools. Let me go to the PPT where I covered that, explained that. Let me go to that performance testing and Sir, Fiddler is a developer tool, right? No. See, all Fiddler these are is called one, of the one of the sniffer tools. Okay, all these are called as sniffer tools. HTTP watch, Fiddler, Wireshark, developer tools. These are, there is a general term called sniffer tools, network sniffer tools. Okay, what does they do? They will capture the request and response, right? Yes or no? Are they capturing yes. the request and response or not? See, if you take developer tools example, all these are nothing but your request, right? All these are nothing but your request. And where is the response? How can we can we see the response of for each request? Yes, sir. I can see. Where can we see that? How to see the response of this request case? HTTP request. If you select the request, you see the response here, right? Of course, not available, no content available because this request was redirected. Right? What is the redirection code? You will see some response code in the, if you go to headers tab, you will see some response code. What is the response code that you see if there is a redirection? Yes, someone said it correctly. Yes. 301, sir. Huh. It can be any response code that starts with number three, right? 3XX, we generally call that as 3XX. Right? If you go to, yeah, see here, we go to headers, right? It is showing some response code, isn't it? That's why you are not seeing any response here, yes or no? But if you see the sub request, you see the response over here, yes or no? Yes, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Essentially, uh, what are these, you know, what is the story, moral of the story here? All these sniffer tools will capture, what does the record? Response. Request and response. Request and response, right? So this is what, you know, this edge, uh, this Fiddler tool is also doing now. It is capturing the requests that are being fired in the background actually. Okay. See, when you are running a browser, right, you will see a lot of CPU utilization, memory utilization, because there will be some background requests that will be sent in the browser. Right. 
So I will show you like how to create a load runner script very soon. Okay, please wait for a moment. Okay, so so all, all these are called a sniffer tools. And what does the sniffer tool does? They sniff the network traffic. You know sniffer dogs, right? What does sniff? What is the general meaning of a sniffer? Or what is the meaning of sniff? Word sniff. Yeah. yeah, what is the meaning of sniff? Dog sniff. Generally, this term is used for uh, you know sniffer dogs. You you might have heard this word, right? Sniffer dogs. So right. So by like uh, with the smell, they will detect something, right? They will detect you know like. Uh, they will, they are able to detect uh, something so that is the gift given to those uh, sniffer dogs or they are trained in that way isn't it yes or no guys to yes, detect sir. a smell or to stop it running or to express content right the act or sound of uh, sniffing right so these all these are called sniffer tools technically called as sniffer tools what are those http watch fiddler wireshark raftroll developer tools these are simple tools. Each of these is a simple tool which you can learn in one to two hours max. Okay. Explore HTTP watch also. Okay. Let me do Google search for HTTP watch. And you know, you can download trial version for that. Actually, it has both trial version and uh, licensed version. Basic edition is free. I'm downloading that HTTP version. Download 29 MB, accepted or download. And uh, they also have a professional edition for which we need to, I think we need to purchase license for this. In company sponsor, we will have a professional or license, right? Yes, yes. Like we will have all these tools. Okay, okay. Right. And it is downloaded now, okay, still in progress. Yeah. All these are called sniffer tools, right? HTTP watch, Fiddler, Wireshark, developer tools. So you can add in your CV if you spend minimum one to two hours on these tools each, right? And also these tools are very much helpful uh, to perform your job. Once you get a job, right? To perform your job, these are these these tools are very much helpful and mandatory tools, guys, right? So definitely one summer other day, everyone has to work on this, okay? So explore these HTTP watch Fiddler. I have shown you some videos, links to some videos on Fiddler as well, right? So go through this documentation or go through the videos, right? Because if I want to cover like again, it will take one week, one at least uh, or at least couple of days for each tool. Okay. So spend some time on this and explore this and you can add it to your CVs. So Fiddler is a... Is, yeah, Fiddler is a free tool or it is a professional version? Free tool. Like it's a free tool only. Fiddler is a free tool. Now yeah. let me show you, let me show what are the options in Fiddler. So if you observe here, by default, you have this capturing enabled. Yes, there is some background noise from few participants. I muted them. I muted everyone. So if you want to ask something, if you have a question, like please unmute yourself and uh, you know, put forward. So observe here in on the Fiddler tool on the left bottom left, right? So whenever you want to refer to any portion of the screen, you should you should learn this, right? How to refer that? Now I am highlighting on the bottom left. Yes or no? Let or else let me choose this. I am I am referring to bottom left portion of the screen where it is showing as capturing. That means Fiddler is recording something when you see this capturing. So if you want to clear this, all these are browser related or else you know, you, you want to clear this, you have an option here. Click on that into mark at the top left, right? Top left and use this option, remove all. Now I want to show you how to record a script, how to create a script from Fiddler, uh, Fiddler session, okay? So, uh, and please remember, it should be in capturing mode. Your Fiddler tool should be in capturing mode if you want to create a script, right? Now, uh, there are some settings, one small settings that you need to do before static recording, uh, before you know uh, using this Fiddler tool. Everyone, please go to tools, options, okay? And by default, it will capture HTTP traffic. Observe here, 
by default it will capture http traffic your fedler tool will capture http traffic by default you need not make any setting for that but if you want to record some https traffic you should go to tools options go to https tab please go to https tab and select this option uh, make sure that this is selected or select these two options capture you know you have two check boxes right select both of them and read this message to intercept https traffic fedler classic generates a unique root certificate you may configure windows to trust this root ca certificate to suppress security warnings this is generally safe click yes to reconfigure windows trusted uh, ca list ca stands for certificate authority right so let me explain what is this message right so it is saying that do you want to allow fedler to intercept the https traffic as simple as that means fedler will capture all the transactions all the requests that you are sending from your browser or from your client to server and fedler is asking for your permission because this is https okay you have to select the trust the fedler classic root certificate you have to agree for this by clicking on s button right and you are about to install a certificate you get a notification like this do you want to install this certificate click yes again then only your fedler will work understood guys fedler will work to fedler will be able to capture https traffic understood or no yes sir right and now please confirm that you wish to add the following certificate to your pc's trusted root list click again yes right and it is asking for a confirmation again user account control confirmation click yes and now fedler's classic root certificate is added to the machine root list you remember jmet root ca certificate yes sir if you want to record something with jmet or https traffic with jmet you need to add root ca certificate to the browser yes or no jmet's root ca certificate to the browser yes or no yes sir in the same way here also we are adding the fedler certificate to root ca certificate to the your my machine's root list that's what we did did now understood or no yes sir everyone did this selected this decrypt https traffic please do this okay and click okay now your fedler is ready to capture https traffic also understood guys now how to record fine we understood that and now how to record the script how to create a script or you know that that is where we are interested right and observe here there is a you know you see a drop down here with different browsers options yes or no first let me clear this because see observe here i opened some websites right observe here i opened some website webminal.org and all these right it is recording some requests that are going in the background facebook.com uh, because i opened facebook here let me show you that i opened facebook in some browser edge browser right you see here facebook is opened here yes or no and webminal.org opened uh, is open here isn't it right so your fedler is capturing all the request in all the browsers see here okay let me send a message in whatsapp it will capture that also so let's i'm sending a message in whatsapp okay so it will capture that also it should capture that also ideally okay Do we have that? Did it capture that guys? See here, web dot whatsapp dot com. Is there no? Guys, understood, guys. Yes, sir. It is capturing all yes, the sir. HTTP traffic, all the HTTP traffic in all the browsers, because we didn't select choose any particular browser. It is simply capturing all the HTTP traffic in all the browsers. okay now i don't want to capture all the you know traffic all those traffic i want to record a script you know we using some firefox browser let's say you right let me clear all this okay and choose the browser from here right and uh, you type something over here so let me type uh, let me use our application demo application 
advantage online shopping.com right make sure that uh, this capturing mode is on please remember this you should remember that this capturing mode is on right and now and i opened firefox browser and i went to advantage online shopping.com it is a https only if you do that uh, setup right then only you will be able to do record okay only if you do that you know go to https and select this decrypt http traffic let me select this also ignore server certificate errors okay and uh, now uh, let me let me navigate through couple of pages tablets and again i'll go to laptop page right i navigated through the application i made some transactions and i navigated through the application right now how to stop the recording is you can click on this capture button here you can click on this capture here it will stop capturing now right it is stopped now okay hey are you seeing that uh, advantage online shopping url here you should see that over here actually not seeing that no sir some issue seems like some issue hold on one second let me check anyone anyone it's not isn't it working for did it work for anyone sir i on yes are you seeing the advent uh, that url here advantage online shopping.com no sir i i i just i just opened the tool fiddle you opened yes, web tools okay no no fiddler in one second guys it's a recorded for me what is that it, it's a recorded for me sir it's recorded for you can you please share your screen i think i missed something here no you followed the same steps that i explained right uh, yes sir okay please share your screen i'm stopping my screen share yes okay if if fedler is properly configured right uh, it should record like this Adva you see those urls right advantage online shopping yes or no yes are you with me yes sir yes right sir. now let me stop that recording can you give me control please kali okay so now let me i stop it let me stop the recording in fedler there are two ways either you can click on this capturing button again so it is a kind of toggle switch like right? like our uh, on and off switch electrical switches right if you click here it will start recording again if you click it will stop recording understood yes, sir. on the bottom left bottom left okay or else you can go to file and you know you can use this button also capture traffic if you clear select f12 right observe here select observe here f12 that is a shortcut for that what what does that mean internally all these sniffer tools use developer tools only f12 is the shortcut for developer tools right yes right so internally they will use the developer tools only right they will work on top of uh, developer tools understood or no all these sniffer tools fiddler wireshark and all these work with the help of developer tools making use of developer tools only they are these tools are built on top of the developer tools functionality in the browser understood guys now you know you can turn or you can turn on or turn off by using this button capture traffic now let me show you how to create a uh, script from this okay go to file and uh, use this option export sessions is it export or all uh, save there are two options here Uh, save all sessions uh, export sessions okay let me try this export sessions no sorry save all you should use okay uh, now i remember yeah go to save all sessions right and observe here it is showing a notice here session archive files may contain passwords or other private information and should be shared only with people you trust what does that mean what is it saying here session archive files means when we save this right it will be saved as a session archive file sar file okay i'll show that uh, uh, in you know in couple of minutes but understand this what is this, what is it saying suppose you record a script or you you navigate through an application 
or you know like uh, you entered some uh, you used some application where credentials are involved where you logged in right you will enter your username and password right it is fedder is displaying a message saying that those usernames and password will be captured in the fedder session archive file so share with the people whom you trust only because those password you know that will reveal your username and password understood or no Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So make sure that you share this Fedler session archive file with only people whom whom you trust. Click OK. Right. And now it observe here it will be saved as session archive file S A Z file dot S A Z. And uh, by default it will be saved in this folder Documents Fedler to Captures. When you install Fedler, this folder gets created in Documents folder. This folder, sorry, this Fedler two folder will be created in Documents folder. By default, it will take you. It will save in that folder. Okay, so I am giving some name to that AOS and Istanbul. I am giving Advantage Online Shopping as the file name. AOS, uh, you know, we navigated two pages. That's it. Okay, AOS, uh, you know, uh, Fedler demo. I'll give some meaningful name, Fedler demo. And save it. And remember, what is the extension that it gets saved? Dot sjz. Dot sjz. Okay. Where it will be saved by default? Document folder. In documents folder. Let's go to the documents folder. Documents. Fiddler two. Captures. It will be saved by default here. Now this is the session archive. Now, uh, see this. Uh, if you already have load runner installed on your machine, if you right click and go to the context menu, this is called as context menu. I already explained this, right? In Windows operating system, if you right click anywhere, the window that comes up is called as context menu. Okay. Now, see here, you have a direct option to create views and script. Observe here. Use that option, click, select that create views and script. Now Vision is getting launched, right? And it will analyze the traffic file, right? What does this Fiddler session archive contains? It will contain all the HTTP requests and responses. Yes or no? We have seen that already what Fiddler captured, yes or no? It captured all the HTTP requests, isn't it? All the HTTP traffic that is two and four traveling from your machine. Now it is analyzing the traffic file observed here. <laughs> Virtual user generator, VUGEN is analyzing the traffic file, that Fiddler traffic file, right? And now it is generating VUSER script. Tool is generating the VUSER script. Let me resume the question. Let me quickly repeat it, guys. Okay, let's do one thing. Now, you know, I already explained you, right? Now, let me let one of you can explain the steps. Okay. Once you once you record, once you record the traffic in Fiddler tool, what should you do, guys? I explained okay. that just now, right? Yes. Go, Go to, to file. select file. Yes. Save. 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 Yes. All sessions. All sessions. Right, all sessions and give some meaningful name to that. Demo I already two. gave some name to that previously, so I am giving us demo one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and remember the extension, SAZ file extension. extension. It will be saved as SAZ SAZ. Dot SAG, right? Where SAG stands for session archive. Okay, so and where it will be saved in? Where it will be saved by default? On documents. Server. Documents. Right. Documents. It will be saved by default in documents, VUGEN scripts. Let me open documents. Right. And VUGEN. There is a, sorry, sorry, documents. Fiddler 2. Captures. Right. There, there. Your, your session it's archive file will be saved by yeah. default. Now, how to create a load on a script from here? Right on open. Simply right click and it will provide a Show direct option. Options. Right? Create mm -hmm. VUGEN script. A direct option to create VUGEN script. 
now you if you see remember like you should be obviously you should be having views and installed on your machine then only this will work isn't it right now your fedler uh, your reusion is analyzing the traffic file which traffic file what is meant by traffic file here guys http http files request and responses fedler traffic file right fedler captured all the http https traffic right that traffic file will be analyzed by reusion and is created a script and your script is ready now isn't it Isn't it? Right. Why are we seeing only? See, previously we saw a lot of other uh, unwanted URLs, but why are we seeing this only advantage online shopping dot com now? In the all time we have removed all the unwanted URLs. Right. We already filtered that in the recording report, right? So you can see that we already did that filtering. Yes or no? we already filtered out the unwanted urls and selected only advantage online shopping.com that's why you are seeing only the in neat and clean script with advantage online shopping.com urls only clear guys so now you can you know like so uh, you use fiddler if you in case if you are unable to record the script directly with the, the tool right so you can rely on these uh, sniffer tools like fiddler apart from this fiddler there are couple of other tools like wireshark right wireshark is another sniffer tool okay so you can rely on these sniffer tools any queries guys before we uh, close the session for today i will include that in the recording Yes, are you with me? Sir, we have to learn any one of tool, or we have to learn all different tools, sir. No, you can use any any tool that you are comfortable with. You can use either Fiddler or Wireshark. Okay. Any one tool, sir. No. Ha, any one tool is enough. Why is difficult to learn too many tools? Is it so difficult, guys? Did we write any code here today? No. No, right? No. Then. say so you can learn the any of these tools in 1 to 2 hours doesn't take more time okay so i'll stop it here for today guys okay and i'll share this as a public video because i still don't have some uh, i mean uh, till i get my personal laptop up and running i don't have january batch you uh, are uh, uh, email id is i will so I, i will share this you know i will upload this uh, recorded session as a public video on my youtube channel and for those outsiders please like share subscribe to my youtube channel for more demo sessions thanks for watching and have a nice day i did some self promotion thanks for watching